Hey there, curious minds. Imagine for a moment the unthinkable. Earth is no longer safe for human habitation. Maybe it's an impending asteroid impact, a runaway greenhouse effect, or even the sun's expansion. Whatever the reason, we have to leave. But how would that massive evacuation play out? Let's dive into this thought experiment. The moment we realize Earth is in peril, the global atmosphere would undergo an unprecedented transformation. Streets would be awash with a mix of dread, confusion and determination. News networks would operate around the clock, updating every new development and people would cling to every word. The notion of business as usual would be thrown out the window as everyone's focus turns towards survival and what comes next. Within this upheaval, the wealthiest members of our society would play a pivotal role. For years, they've been investing in and championing private space ventures, dreaming of otherworldly explorations, commercial space flights, and even extraterrestrial colonization. These projects, which many once viewed as ambitious fantasies, could suddenly become the most practical and valuable assets humanity possesses. Take Elon Musk, for instance. His company SpaceX had visions of colonizing Mars. With self-sustaining habitats and advanced propulsion systems, their spacefaring technology might offer a glimmer of hope, even if initially intended for other purposes. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, with its focus on building a road to space, would also be in the spotlight. The vessels designed for suborbital tourist flights might be repurposed, retrofitted, or used as foundational ideas for creating something bigger, something capable of saving a broader cross-section of humanity. These billionaires, due to their resources and foresight, would be uniquely positioned. Their enterprises could mobilize faster than bureaucratic governments, adapting their missions from exploration to evacuation. But with this power come significant ethical questions. Who decides the mission's priorities? Profit-driven companies are, by design, beholden to shareholders and bottom lines. In the face of Earth's potential demise, would these motivations shift? And if so, how? This new space race would also drive innovation at an unprecedented speed. The urgency to design, build and launch life-saving vessels would ignite a technological renaissance. Companies would collaborate, sharing knowledge and expertise, pushing boundaries in propulsion, life support systems and sustainable habitats. In a race against time, every second counts and the collaborative spirit of humanity might shine its brightest. Led by those with the means to make a difference, the announcement of an imminent threat to Earth, forcing a mass evacuation, would undoubtedly trigger a multifaceted response from governments worldwide. This mammoth task would test the mettle of leaders and institutions, revealing both the strengths and frailties of human governance. Historically, crises of global magnitude have sometimes led to unprecedented cooperation between nations. While political differences, territorial disputes and economic competitions have often fragmented our world, the sheer scale of this evacuation might push nations towards collaboration. Emergency summits could be convened, pooling together the brightest minds, resources and technologies. One of the foremost challenges would be the allocation of resources. Which country contributes what? Space programs such as NASA, ESA, Roscosmos, CNSA and ISRO would possibly need to coordinate their efforts. This could involve sharing research, technological innovations and manpower to accelerate the development and construction of evacuation vessels. Arguably, the most contentious aspect would be deciding who gets to board these ships. Would it be a meritocratic selection based on skills and expertise needed for the new world? Or would a more egalitarian approach be adopted, perhaps a lottery system ensuring a fair chance for all? Balancing these choices would be a moral, social and logistical tightrope. Maintaining public order would be vital. Governments would need to establish clear, transparent communication channels, updating citizens about progress, plans and any changes. Fostering a sense of unity and purpose, while managing panic and fear, would be a daily endeavour. While the primary goal would be survival, Governments would also be cognizant of the need to preserve the rich tapestry of human culture and knowledge. This could involve creating digital archives of art, literature, history and science. Every nation might contribute, ensuring a holistic representation of human civilization as we know it. 
Traditional economic models and currencies could face obsolescence in light of the impending exodus. New systems might be drafted, prioritizing resource, sharing, barter, or even a unified global currency designed for the unique requirements of life aboard the ships and beyond, with the global stakes so high ensuring law and order would be paramount. International security forces could be formed to safeguard construction sites, technology hubs, and embarkation points. They'd also be responsible for mediating conflicts, both at national borders and within the confines of the evacuation ships. In the face of such an imminent and immense challenge, the design and construction of life-sustaining spaceships would have to prioritize efficiency, functionality, and rapid deployment. Building a spacecraft is no easy feat under regular circumstances, but under these conditions, conventional methodologies would need to be revisited and adapted. Central to the design would be sustainability. The spacecraft would be home to its inhabitants for an indeterminate amount of time. As such, closed-loop life support systems would become crucial. This means systems that can regenerate resources, recycling air, water and even waste. Imagine large hydroponic sections, where plants are grown not just for sustenance, but also for the psychological benefits they bring in a confined, sterile environment. Spaceships would need to be modular in design. Modularity implies building sections or components separately, which can then be combined with ease, like pieces of a puzzle. This would not only expedite construction, but also allow for adaptability. Depending on the mission or the number of passengers, these modules could be customized for specific needs, be it medical facilities, food production or recreational areas. Construction would likely shift to an orbital setting, Building in space eliminates many of the challenges posed by Earth's gravity. Massive structures, which would be impossible to launch from Earth due to their size and weight, could be constructed in space. Moreover, the use of materials sourced from space itself, like asteroids, might become a feasible and necessary approach. This would reduce the need to lift heavy payloads from Earth's surface, saving time and resources. Energy efficiency would be another cornerstone. Given the long durations these crafts might spend in space, they'd need robust and renewable energy sources. Solar panels, spread out like vast wings, might gather energy from the sun, while innovative nuclear propulsion systems could offer greater travel speeds and efficient energy usage. Another challenge would be shielding. Space is not friendly to human life. It's filled with radiation, micrometeors and extreme temperatures, Therefore, the outer layers of these crafts would need to be tough, providing protection while also incorporating materials or designs that can deflect or absorb harmful radiation. In the grand arena of space, every square inch of the ship would need a purpose. No longer dominated by aesthetics, design would bend towards practicality and survival. But within this, there would be an acknowledgement of human needs, spaces to socialize, to find solitude, to maintain mental well-being. The understanding that the journey might be long and that the human spirit requires more than just physical sustenance would influence designs that cater to the whole human experience. As the shimmering blue orb of Earth recedes into the cosmic background and the vastness of space becomes the daily view, life aboard these evacuation spacecraft would represent one of the most profound shifts in human existence. A life untethered from our ancestral home with the cold vacuum of space just beyond the walls is a reality that would demand adaptability, resilience and innovation. Aboard the ship, the passage of days might become less defined by the rise and set of the sun and more by artificial markers. The concept of a 24-hour day might no longer be relevant, leading to the establishment of new routines and schedules. Ensuring a structured environment could be key to psychological well-being. Activities, work rotations and leisure times would be meticulously planned, bringing a semblance of order to the potentially chaotic situation. With a diverse population aboard, the ship would become a melting pot of cultures, ideas and beliefs. This could lead to new cultural evolutions or potential tensions. However, the mutual understanding of shared fate and purpose might foster unity and cooperation. Spaces dedicated to social interactions would be essential, from community halls for larger gatherings to smaller niches for more intimate conversations. The absence of natural gravity could have profound effects on the human body. Muscles and bones weaken in such environments. Hence, daily exercise routines using specially designed equipment 
might become mandatory for all inhabitants. Without the fertile lands of Earth, traditional farming becomes a memory. In its stead, hydroponics and aeroponic systems might dominate, with sections of the ship dedicated to growing essential crops. Algal farms could serve as both a source of oxygen and nutrition. The diet would likely be supplemented with lab-grown meats and vitamins to ensure a balanced nutrient intake for all. The isolation of space, combined with the knowledge of Earth's predicament, could weigh heavily on the minds of those aboard. Mental health would be a paramount concern. Space is designed for relaxation, meditation or even spiritual practices might become essential. Therapists and counselors would play a crucial role, helping individuals cope with the unique stresses of their new existence. Education wouldn't cease. Digital archives carrying the knowledge of Earth might be accessed in onboard learning centers. These hubs would not only educate the younger generation, but also allow adults to acquire new skills, catering to the evolving needs of the ship. All work and no play would make for a very dull journey. Recreational areas for games, arts, music, and other forms of entertainment would provide crucial respite from the daily routines. These activities wouldn't just serve as distractions, but also as outlets for expression and creativity. With no destination like a nearby hospitable planet, these ships would become generational vessels. Stories of Earth that was might become the stuff of legends, narrated to wide-eyed children who've never set foot on solid ground. Over time, cultures aboard each ship would evolve, leading to a diverse array of human subcultures, each shaped by their unique shipboard experiences. And as always, thanks for watching.